In this video, we're going to test out some of the basic features of Swing so we can start building more complex user interfaces. So I'm going to go ahead and start by building an application called testbuttons.java. So nano testbuttons.java, and we're going to need a few imports here right off. We're going to need import javax.swing.jpanel, import javax.swing.jframe, import javax.swing.jbutton, and import javax.swing.jlabel. We'll also import java.awt.borderlayout and we'll import java.awt.flowlayout. Now that we've built all those, we can write, start writing our class. Public class test buttons. And we'll write a main method, public static void main. So now we have our program. But let's make it do something interesting. I'll start off by building a JFrame. New JFrame. Test some buttons is what we will make the title. We'll go ahead and write that out. And then we'll just set up our window real quickly. One, one window dot set size. We'll make it 600 by 600. We will use window dot set location relative to null in order to center it in the screen. We will set window set default location or set default close operation JFrame dispose on close. And then we'll go ahead and show it. Now let's write it out. We'll exit. We will Compile Java C test buttons dot 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 Java Java test buttons and here we go. We have a nice square window in our screen, and you can see that's taking up quite a bit of space. Uh, six hundred by six hundred really isn't too large, but uh, the fact that I'm working on a lower resolution kind of makes it take up a lot of space. But that's a good start. So we've got our application. We close it, and you can see we return to the command line. So now that we've done this, let's go ahead and start putting some things into our window. So we're going to go into the window right after we declare it. And you can put this pretty much anywhere, but we'll go ahead and set up all of our objects first. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and create a new J panel. I'm going to call it button panel. And we're going to give it a flow layout. Flow layout is going to cause its uh, button, the components within it to just appear given their preferred size, left to right, nice and simple. And we're going to create a few J buttons as well. We'll say J button blue is equal to new J button. We'll give it some text that says blue. And we'll set its foreground color. Uh, we're going to need to import color. Let's go ahead and do that. Import java.awt.color. All right. And let's go ahead and add that to our button panel. Button, panel, add, blue. Now we've added this button to the button panel, but we need to add our button panel to our main, main window. So let's go ahead and create another J panel, main panel. And we'll make this a border layout, which will cause our components to be laid out either in the north, south, west, or east, or the center of that of that uh, that panel. Main panel add button panel border layout dot south. And just to demonstrate how this works, let's go ahead. We've got some J labels. We'll main panel add new J label north button layout dot north. Main panel dot add new J label west button layout dot west main panel add new j label east button I'm sorry border layout that won't compile <laughs> and main panel add new j label now if we leave off the call to border layout here, that one will just go right to the center. So we'll go ahead and accept the default. Now if I compile this and I run it, 
we haven't actually added our main panel. So we need to set the main panel as our content pane here. Let's go ahead and back into the class and we'll do that. Test buttons.java. We've set up our button panel here. We've added our button panel to our main panel. But we need to actually go into the window and set our main panel. Window.set content pane main panel. Now when we compile and run our code, we can see that we've laid out our components. This north is taking up the entire north northern area here. The east is taking up the eastern area. The west is taking up the west area. And the center is taking up all of this area in, this, in the middle. Now, J labels don't have any type of border, so it's hard to tell how much space they're really taking up. If we were to change these to J buttons, you would see much more clearly. But you can see at the bottom, you know, we have one J button, and it's a normal size. Let's go ahead and change all of those J labels to J buttons, just so you can see what that looks like. So I'm going to change this value to a J button, all four of these to J buttons. And now we can see what that's actually going to look like when we run this. And you can see now this is taking up the entire left to right of the window. This is taking up all the space that's left from the top to the bottom. Center's take filling in everything that's left there, and then on the east, you can see that's taking up the entire top to bottom side on the right. And our flow or our button panel at the bottom, using a flow layout, you can see it's just putting that one button in there, right as you would expect. Let's go back into test buttons. So I'm going to go ahead and take out all of these values here. We're going to take out north, west, east, and west. And we'll change our J button back to a J label so we can see the center. Now, if we want to add a few more buttons to our screen, we could actually use these three lines. But, you know, one thing that we do a lot in Java is we create methods to allow us to do things very simply. So I'm going to create a new method here. I'm going to call this private static void build button. And I'm going to have this method. Notice I made it void because it's not going to return anything, and I made it static. And the reason I have to make it static is if I'm going to call it directly from my main method, static methods can only call other static methods. Now, if you think about that, that makes sense because uh, a static method doesn't need an instance of the object test buttons. The static method can just be called anywhere. So in order to call a, a non-static method, you need an instance of an object. We'd have to instantiate test buttons as a new, uh, new test buttons object. Uh, but static methods can be called from any other static method. So we're just going to build this or create this method, a build button, as a static method. Uh, we'll go ahead and say we're going to pass in a value for our button, a color for our button, and a J panel to add the button to. Now we can use J button button is equal to new J button value button dot set foreground to color to add add button. Now instead of these three lines, we can very easily call our new method build button blue color dot blue button panel. If we want to add a few different buttons, we can just uncut that a few times. And we'll use orange and red and green and magenta. We'll change our colors too. Now we should have five buttons, each with different colors. And it was much simpler than you know writing the 15 lines that would be necessary to do this. To just write those uh, that one call to the method all in one line makes that much easier. Let's compile. We'll run this. And you should see now we have all five of these buttons, a blue button, an orange button, a red button, a green button, and a magenta button. So nice and simple. So this should give you some basic practice on working with different layouts, the border layout and the flow layout, as well as creating some buttons and, and arranging those on your screen. 
Thanks for watching and don't forget to practice your coding.